Hello everyone, my name is Maz Barami from Wolfram Research. Welcome to the first session of the Data Transformation Workflows with Anton Antonov. For those of you who have seen our previous live streams, uh, Dr. Antonov, he's an applied mathematician with more than 20 years of experience in algorithm development, natural language processing, and machine learning. And he's also a very good friend of mine. I'm very happy to have him today. Uh, during the first session, we are going to introduce the target data transformation workflows and related concepts. Handing over to you, Anton, looking forward to your first session. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you for the introduction. So uh, here, the title of this uh, tutorial cycle is data transformation workflows, but it is actually tabular data transformation workflows. Data transformation and data wrangling is much more general type of activity. So I'm going to introduce uh, what we are going to be doing in this uh, lectures, in this uh, tutorial uh, through questions and answers. So usually when we are when you're doing presentation, it's a good idea to be either to know very well what you're talking about and, or to be excited about it and preferably both. So am I excited about data transformation? Not really, to be honest. Uh, to some extent, that's why I'm talking about, about that. Uh, unfortunately, majority of the time before doing any type of machine learning or data science advanced or preferable projects, I need to do quite a lot of uh, data wrangling and data transformations. So it is an interesting question, can this process be sp sped up uh, with what techniques, what kind of methodology we can uh, be more effective and do this uh, faster. Another perspective is um, how well we can communicate this. If we say leave this project or want to hand it to somebody else, can they easily understand what kind of data transformations we are doing and uh, what is the reasoning behind it? So this tutorial, uh, which is, we plan to have like say three lectures uh, uh, from 25 minutes uh, with this tutorial. This tutorial is dedicated to a particular simplified uh, perspective on both the data and what are the typical workflows in my, experience, this, the workflows I'm going to talk about, they're applicable probably in like around 70% of the cases. Obviously, some other things need to be done and they're not going to be uh, described here. So I kind of switched from the first question to the, to the second question, but um, there's some simplifying assumptions for the family of workflows we consider. And so we don't, um, we don't going to deal with data gathering and harvesting or scraping data from the web or how we parse data from XML structures. Another type of um, um, data wrangling activities, they're concerned with uh, date and time and specifically transforming date time in whatever kind of convenient forms, also natural uh, language text, how we, how we deal with natural language text and say convert some free form uh, human language texts into say matrices, which are amenable for doing data science and machine learning. This is not what we're discussing here in this, um, in this uh, tutorials. So um, the simplifying assumptions about the targeted data and transformations, it's uh, they're pretty straightforward. We're only dealing with tabular data. Wolfram language has has, uh, uh, has been positioned to deal with much more complicated hierarchical uh, data structures from the very beginning and recently now with the, now in the, the last few years with uh, say uh, the introduction of associations and data sets. Here we intentionally restrict our attention to tabular data, basically not matrices, but yeah, like say data sets, which can be represented with matrices. We are going to be using workflows, which are fairly uh, standard in some way. And when I say standard, they either, they exist out, they're standard outside of the Wolfram language realm, so to speak, of like say uh, how it is done in SQL or how some other systems for technological computations would approach uh, this type of transformation workflows. So this actually, uh, 
I also answered the second questions. Do these workflows apply to other programming languages and data systems? Yes, they do. Um, most of the, the popular data science uh, programming languages, I would say like R and Python, they, they do heavily use the methodology I'm going to uh, discuss. And um, in many ways, that's the reason I'm discussing because it's heavily used in, in them. A new contender, Julia, uh, also incorporates a large part already and almost to full extent, this particular style of uh, data transformations I'm going to talk about. So um, there are no additional packages in order to to do what we are uh, going to be, I'm going to be presenting, but there are going to be some functions in uh, which are in the Wolfram function repository, resource functions, which we are going to use. Uh, the reasons for this uh, are several. As I said, uh, Wolfram earlier, uh, Wolfram language um, has a much more complicated data structures uh, as a target. And um, from that perspective, the functions I'm, I have say implemented and sub submitted to Wolfram function repository, which simplify the data transformations I'm going to discuss in these tutorials, they do not exist in the Wolfram language because they're somewhat narrower in scope. Namely, they deal with uh, tabular data, but they're also fairly, fairly well known uh, type of techniques and um, probably funda they're considered fundamental when it comes to data transformation and data wrangling. So, uh, there's some, as I mentioned this already several times, but uh, this tutorial, although we're doing it with uh, Wolfram language, the know-how, the, the workflows, they should be, should be applicable to any other system you have in mind, be that SQL or Julia, Python, or something like that. So uh, many of these um, uh, systems, like say Julia, Python, R, like say, uh, has at least uh, three different packages for de dealing with um, data transformations. Now, they, they take slightly different perspective of, of what we are going to be discussing, but they all have, share certain common workflows. Um, one of the, this is probably one of my favorite um, uh, questions in the whole, uh, in the whole list, is uh, what are the most important um, concepts for newcomer to, to data wrangling or this data transformations I'm talking about. So I have to say uh, my, my um, priority is probably somewhat uh, different. I would say this is the first one and this is the second. And I don't know, like my it kind of changes, but I put it, put them in such an order in which I think they, uh, someone who generally is really a newcomer to data wrangling and probably statistics. And when I say statistics, every time we deal with data, we do statistics, this kind of statistics I have in mind. So a uh, newcomer to data wrangling and statistics, they should know, uh, they should know uh, this concept uh, cross tabulation first. So I'm going to exemplify it uh, later on. Cross tabulation, uh, it's not just a data wrangling uh, concept. It's actually uh, one of the so-called um, statistic, fundamental statistical operations. Like, hey, let me show an example here. Maybe it was, I prepared it earlier. This is from Titanic data somewhere here. I have made a, I have used this resource function cross tabulate and I called it on uh, the Titanic data over passenger class and passenger sex. This uh, cross tabulate tells me how many uh, female passengers I, has, I had uh, in first class, how many male passengers in first class and so forth, right? So this is a fundamental, it's a fundamental operation. Another thing is joints. Again, this we're talking about newcomers, the so-called uh, split applied combined pattern. That's, um, uh, that's both uh, very often is being uh, met in computer science and uh, in any kind of computer science, like say parallel programming or standard, when I say standard, standard to an intermediate type of functional programming, we always do that. So I'm going to explain uh, in more detail what uh, in this particular, in this particular session, what uh, the, the split apply combined pattern is. But this is, I would say, I would have put it in first place. Maybe, I don't know. Right now I'm thinking maybe it should be in the second place. 
the long form and wide form. Again, these are data reshaping type of functionalities. They are very important. I'll, again, I see them as uh, fundamental operations. Um, before going further with the actual with the actual workflows and examples, I mean, very important question is the considered workflows, not just data transformation in general, but because always we need to do data transformations. These da data transformation workflows, how they relate to machine learning. And pretty directly, I'm going to show this with some examples later on. But that said, um, Mathematica, Wolfram language has an extensive set of uh, data onboarding functions. The so-called encoders and decoders you might see when you deal with neural networks or deal with classify. They simplify quite a lot of uh, the work which is uh, probably required to, to do if they didn't exist. A similar type of functionalities which I didn't put here is the feature extraction. The encoders and decoders were they are in the part of the language. The feature extraction is part of the language, Wolfram language, but many of the feature extraction functions are still experimental, or at least they are labeled as such in um, the, the function page. All right, so I want to reiterate, and probably I am going to start every lecture with this uh, statement. We're going to be dealing with tabular data, like data frames or data sets. And, uh, very simple structures based on tabular data, like say simple collections like lists or associations of tabular data. This is the this is the scope of um, of uh, what we are going to the data we are going to work on. So um, the workflows um, we are going to consider the, um, in my opinion, fully encompassed uh, in this uh, flowchart. So I'm going to go through the flowchart. So tabular data specification, like say something like say, I mean, you can see here, I use the particular particular resource uh, function, example data spec uh, to data set, machine learning Titanic, and I produce this data set here. So yeah, this is what I'm, I'm talking about. So there's some specification, we go to some repository, in this particular case is the example data uh, built in, in Wolfram language, we get the data. Um, this, this is a must. Then we, uh, we actually can uh, do some uh, summaries and some of the um, summarization of the data, like analyze it in some way. I'm going to do this uh, here right now. And so with this uh, DF Titanic data, right? So yeah, I mean, so some summary, I see the, I have this four columns, passenger class H, passenger sex, passenger survival, and different counts related to them. Now, you might do some, of course, some uh, additional, additional analysis or additional type of querying, but we're going to ask ourselves at this point, does this need a data for whatever we're doing? Does it, does it uh, has to be transformed? Uh, what should we do with it? So this is the so-called uh, split, transform, and combine pattern. So we split the data in some particular way, like say row wise or column wise. And um, each of the subsets of the data being transformed. And for example, I'm going to show, imagine for this Titanic data, I wanna split by class and I wanna see how many, uh, how many records I have for each passenger class. So basically this seeing this, how many records, this this uh, query about the length of the of the number of records or the, the counts this is what is going to do the transformation and then we combine it do we combine it back in a list do we combine it in something else association this uh, in this uh, flow chart uh, all of the except probably the first three all of these um, rectangles which are play, uh, represent operations they're optional we can apply this, we can filter the data, we can also not filter the data, just go to splitting. Or we can split it, but also not split it, just go to transformation. So after we have done the split apply combined pattern, which is with this orange uh, rectangles, another, um, another type of activity uh, thing to do on the data is reshaping, like say cross tabulation or long form conversion and wide form conversion. Uh, at this point, we need to decide, we come back here, we need to decide, are we done with our transformations? Do we wanna do something else? And, uh, and then we 
If not, we continue with this loop. Sometimes we need to go through this loop several times. So I'm going to give an, an example with what I was just discussing. So I put uh, things in order here. So first I'm getting the data. And so, and then I summarize it. So basically this is this first two steps here. So now you see when I do group by, and let me show this, how it's going to look. If I don't supply the second, uh, the third argument, if I just supply second argument, this is going to uh, split the data into the, namely to the passenger class. So I did uh, make some splitting and I wanna make, see the dimensions. So, so basically with these three arguments for group by, I split uh, the Titanic data by class and for each of the elements separately, I found the dimensions. So, I mean, instead of dimensions, I could have put uh, length because I mean, obviously we have four columns. And so this is probably more informative. So this, this particular operation group by, it, uh, it, did, uh, it did basically all the elements uh, being listed here. So we split the data with, with uh, say group by, and split the rows by some criteria, which uh, in this case, our criteria was very simple, just passenger class. We transform the groups, I, I called length of them. This is the thing here. And then I combine them into an association. So this is what is happening, right? So the result here is an association. I might not be necessarily satisfied with what I did and I want to redo the whole thing. I am doing exactly the same splitting here, but right now, instead of just uh, calling um, and just say finding the lengths, I actually want to do the cross tabulation. I actually want to see within each of the passenger class um, uh, subsets, what is exactly the distribution between uh, the cross tabulation, the distribution of say survival and sex. And you can see, for example, in a first class, females basically survived and uh, more or less the same for the second class. For the third class, uh, it's 50-50, right? Males in the third class, they disproportionately, many of them died. And in general, you know, most of the males that died, which I assume, uh, you know, males were giving, um, giving uh, right of way for, for women to, to the rescue boats. All right, this is not about data analysis, but it is actually illustrating how exactly we uh, going through this, um, a cycle probably several times and uh, then we we kind of uh, evaluate what is going on and then declare victory at some point or give up or whatever right so the the second illust illustrating example i have is uh, slightly more more oh i think it is more complicated but one of the reasons so we we saw with this uh, example with the cross tabulation it's one of the reshaping right now i want to do another type of reshaping here this is the so-called long form conversion. One of the advantages of using long form is that um, it lets us um, treat metadata, like say metadata, and I mean uh, column names like here. It let us treat uh, metadata as data and do something else additionally on them. So what is happening here? Again, I'm retrieving, uh, I'm retrieving the data from from the from uh, the example data from uh, some repository here, and uh, I mean I, I just see that uh, obviously for each uh, year in which uh, we have this lake meet, for each uh, year we have uh, this um, elevation records, elevation statistics for each of the months of the year. The thing is that uh, that's actually probably. I mean, if I want to produce time series, what I, what I can do, what should I do? I mean, well, obviously I can do this, just take the first column and then iteratively combine it with the rest of the columns. This is one way to do it. Alternatively, I can do this uh, through, I can introduce the long form. So with the long form, I'm going to actually, let me uh, show the steps here. With the long form, I'm first going to, to move uh, this uh, the column the columns here with a corresponding values. I mean, you can see I made them. I made two uh, two columns from the columns two to uh, thirteen on this original data set. I made two columns. One is with the month. The other is with the elevation. One of the advantages of using long form 
is what the metadata names, the column names, they become data. So they become data values here in this column. Now I can do some additional transformation. You can see here how I'm transforming the month into, into an actual, an actual um, number. And after I have done that, I can do again this uh, group by whatever uh, transformations produce time series. You know, so I split this this uh, uh, data set here. I split it by the year. So this one is uh, shown here, and then I make time series for the for the values, and then I can plot the values. So let's uh, let's go here for this uh, uh, flow chart again. So this uh, we in this second example, it had all of the elements listed here. We retrieve the data. I have um, evaluated uh, the data in some way. I did some, I skipped in the first pass, I skipped this um, standard um, split apply transform. I immediately went to reshaping, reshaped it in with the long, uh, long form. And then with this new newly produced uh, data, I actually started doing the without filtering. I just split it with, by ear and made time series for each of the groups. And then I visualize them. So basically, this is what is happening here in the second example. I'm going to just follow the steps here. I got the data. I convert it to long form. The long form was additionally um, massaged, transformed in some way. And this is the advantage of having uh, the metadata being, being transformed into data. Then we do the split apply combine, which is I'm splitting by year, making time series for each of the elements. And then the result here they're basically associations, right? So, seventy-five associations, and I can go, I can show it, show them all to you. But um, instead of this, uh, you know, list, I just, I just gave here a sample of this uh, association. So the combining part was, um, was the associations. If you look at, say, parallel combine, if you want to do these computations in parallel in Mathematica in general, not just for this. If it is embarrassingly parallel, but Marika has parallel table, parallel parallel map, we're, we're going through exactly the same uh, sequence of operations. We split uh, the data for the different processors processors we have or cores. Uh, we transform the data with whatever algorithms we have specified. And then uh, the results from these different cores or processors are being combined in one way or the other. So, um, well, here is a reference of the functions uh, which are not built in, but they in the Wolfram uh, uh, function uh, repository. And um, in the, um, the other two lectures which come up, I'm going to discuss in more detail how exactly, say, the reshaping and the, the split apply combined pattern is uh, being utilized in a different, um, if not frequent, met often enough cases. And thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Anton. Uh, one comment: uh, Is there is it a personal preference to basically normalize? Uh, saying normalize is not correct. Basically, killing that data set heading and use normal data set like list of associations or association of associations. Is it a personal preference, or there was a reason? You know, beyond. Um, very good question. To some extent, it, it really, uh, it was just easier, in my opinion, it, for this per particular example here, it's just, uh, it's just easier and more straightforward to show the results in this way. But I mean, it's, uh, it's also like, uh, yeah, it's personal, it's personal preference. What can I say? In my opinion, uh, all these transformations we should try to do them, I said tabular data and data sets, but we should try to do them on associations of associations or list of associations, which mm -hmm. is what data sets are. Because mm -hmm. we don't know in a particular uh, situation what, what is more convenient. Is it using mm -hmm. a data set? Using, use, is it using uh, a list of uh, associations? Although, uh, for example, this long form uh, function I implemented, it works on data set and associations, right? But it always produces data sets. So mm -hmm. there's some advantages of just using data sets. It's a, a little bit more intuitive and uh, easier to explain, especially from the perspective of um, um, cross system knowledge, cross, cross system know-how, like uh, using data sets is the same as using data frames in, in R and Python or some other systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So I would like just to, you know, uh, remind all of our, you know, users, please, you know, visit, you know, Wolfram Function Repository. There are tons of, you know, interesting submissions from our external users, including Anton. Anton himself, you know, he has very interesting, I believe so far about 15, you know, functions who has been published and he has a few more, you know, the, he's going to submit them soon. So anyone, if you have any interesting function that you think is going to be useful for other users, please submit to Wolfram Function Repository because other users, you know, they can use it in, you know, in their computational explorations. Uh, th there is one comment about the usage, you know, statistics of Wolfram Function Repository. I don't have the answer right now. I'm going to explore it. And hopefully next time I'm going to provide, you know, the answer to that. Um, I think that's a very good point, you know, to wrap up this session. Uh, you were watching the first session of uh, data transformation workflow with Anton Antonov. You can find the recorded videos on Wolfram Research YouTube channel. You can also interact directly with Anton. You can find it on the Wolfram community. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Thank you.